Test, test, here we go. Are we recording? <laughs> We're recording. What up, Internet? J.O. here. All right, today we are going to deep dive into the stats of the Death Walker. Um, absolutely my least favorite of all the classes so far, especially the ones that I have played. Uh, we did a range build with the Death Walker. Um, focused heavily on, you know, the powerful skills that usually consume or remove a shadow. Um, but, man, ah, man, I like, I was so excited about the Death Walker. Like, excited before I even got the game. I'm like, that's the class I'm going to play. I love ranged characters. The whole shadow mechanic sounds so cool. Uh, you can teleport and do all this neat stuff. And when I first started playing, dove in head first, so like pretty pumped. But I like I could never like find a script that worked. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm like constantly doing way less damage than like all of my peers. And I'm like, maybe this will change. And then like level three or four, like there was a big jump. My modifier deck got a lot better. The Deathwalker has a very good modifier deck. Um, so that was like nice, but I was still like below average to average on damage and ultimately i just got so tired of like the puzzle within the puzzle like the death walker very similar to the banner spear is just so based on the board state like i mean every character in like frost haven gloom haven world you pick your two cards and then you hit the initiative and you're like oh man i can't do what i wanted to do and it's like annoying right you can only get like a part off of what you want to do you can't optimize your turn every single round but like with the death walker and the banner spear too like it's even more than that like it is so rare that you can actually do stuff like your shadows are never in the right spot or you don't have enough shadows or you're constantly like oh the guy didn't die so i don't get the shadows and so now i can't do this and it's just like it's just an added headache that is like almost like random in a lot of ways because of the draw the monster deck and knowing whether they're going to go fast or slow it's just so hard to adjust i think if i ever did the death walker again i would do a little bit more of the melee build not fully because the character is so squishy but i think i would like focus more like less on like the remove shadow abilities even though those are the powerful ones and maybe more on like the ones that like keeping shadows on the board i might even try an eclipse based approach because Call of the Abyss just takes so long to get things going. Um, anyways, so that's my rant. Let's dive into the stats. So initiative, 32, really good. Deathwalker has amazing initiative. That's absolutely one of the positives. So that's great there. Uh, move ability is above average. A lot of that has to do with the teleport. Teleporting from shadow to shadow was super fun. Thought that was great. Uh, but at the same time, you can see not a lot. Don't have to move a lot in each scenario. So when I do move, it's very effective. But I don't have to move a ton. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the range build can attack from like ridiculous ranges depending on how you use your shadows and things like that which is really fun when you can pull that off damage per round 3.31 we're a little bit below average here you can see but as i mentioned like the jump doesn't happen till way later you can see i mean i guess i mean there's a big jump from two to three that had a lot to do with the modifier deck you're still a little below average there. It looks like your biggest jump is from three to four. And then at that point, you kind of level out. So uh, just really challenging um, with the Death Walker. I think some of that has to do with, like, as you go up in levels, like level four, you know, I could get more cards out. I got Fleeting Dusk. That was a nice card. That top was really fun when you could pull that off. That was amazing. Level three cards are, like, not super powerful. They're, like, attack threes. He had a curse. I got Deadbolt or he just had a curse. So, like, you can just see that, like, the jumps just, like, don't go big. I mean, level 5, we did get Dominate. That was an awesome card. But, again, we didn't always have Shadows to use it. So, it was kind of situational. And it sort of started competing with um, Fluid Knight. Which, Fluid Knight and Dark Fog, you can see in our other videos, is just one of the most staple things we could do as a team. So, overall, a little bit weaker uh, than most characters. And, again, I think... I don't think that I think that that's more game state dependent is that you have a lot of rounds in which you cannot use your cards or you can't optimize your turn and that really plays into this damage per round max damage 18 I know this was a result of the top of fleeting dusk we like dominated like 
five vermlings. That was super fun. So that was like really cool. Uh, attacks per round. This is really the weakness of the Deathwalker. And kind of the thing that bothers me the most is that you have a single target damage dealer. Like does not have a lot of multiple target attacks. A few of them here and there. A lot of most of them are losses when you actually are going to use the multiple targets. Uh, cards like Top of Dark Fog and stuff like that. Um, I know Black Barrage. I'm sorry, not Black Barrage. Uh, it is Forceful Spirits. I know Forceful Spirits can attack two targets, but it's like range two, so it's like really awkward. Like you have to be in the perfect spot to like even hit two targets without disadvantage. Um, so that's tough. Anyways, so the tax per round is very low, and that is my biggest complaint with this class is that if you're going to have a single target damage dealing class, they should be able to deal an insane amount of damage. Now, the damage per attack is 3.85, so it is better than the normal average of 3.11, but to me it's just not enough, especially when your attacks per round is just that low. Like, you're not even averaging one attack around because of the board state. So, so healing, very bad here. I mean, when you do heal, you usually heal two, uh, at least historically. We have look at the round... Or level 6, we didn't even heal. Uh, he heals performed. I mean, there's one heal card. I think it's an X card. I took it a couple times in the beginning and then sort of started fading it out at higher levels. But yeah, you are not a strong healer at all. Heals per scenario, 0.62 average. Uh, really bad. So that adds to the fact that this character is super squishy. However, because if you play the range class, this is why I don't even know how the melee version would work because it's... It would just be so hard to keep them alive. But if you play in the range class, this is amazing. Damage taken per scenario, 7.31. This is way below average. This might be the lowest of any character. And that's because you can attack from so far away. Um, attacks taken per scenario, only 4.15. Also very low compared to everything else. And then damage taken per attack, 1.76. That's not horrible. Um, you know, a little bit below average. So it just means that when you are attacked, you're taking just under two each time. So, um, and you know, that had something to do with some of the armor or things that we had on. Um, but overall, obviously a squishy character, but good survivability because of the ranged. No support damage, nothing here that helps with that poison or brittle or anything like that all right so diving into the crowd control here once you get to level five and if you use dominate that helped a lot that is like just an amazing card attack six with a disarm uh again it, like this is the weird stuff with the death walker like this is an amazing card but you can only use it once per rest cycle right and for some reason just doesn't show up in the stats because all the other cards are weaker or even your two like bread and butter cards black barrage and forceful spirits like the tops are decent if you spend a shadow you can get a three attack out of it but then like the bottoms are good too so it's like you've got both a good bottom and top action especially when it comes to moving shadows or moving yourself and you can only pick one or the other and then all the rest of your cards just aren't that good so it's just it's really weird here. I'm All right, rounds between rest. A um, little below normal, 3.69. I know that the Deathwalker has an 11 card hand, um, but it's kind of weird. Like, because you're so reliant on putting Call to the Abyss in, like right away, you're basically a 10 card, which means like after your first rest, you're only getting four rounds. Um, so it's, it's a lot smaller the way it plays out than... Um, a lot of the other classes because of that sort of demand there. Uh, so 3.69 rounds between rests, a little below the average compared to other characters. Um, exhaustion rate, look at this. Only once out of 15 scenarios. That is amazing. And again, that comes back to a lot of these stats over here where like not taking a lot of damage. I mean, survivability on this character is fantastic. If, if you're looking for like a non-tanky survivable character, this is it because you're attacking at just such massive ranges. But again, it comes at a cost because uh, you're just not going to be as powerful as a lot of other classes. And maybe that's maybe that's the balance that they wanted to design here. Um, although ultimately, I'd take a character that takes a lot of damage and deals a lot of damage just because it makes the game a lot easier. And I think that was it. Like the Deathwalker just didn't make anything easier when you played with it. Like it wasn't a character that. The team was excited to have in the party and could rely on and i think that that's tough so loot 1.77 below average 
experience, uh, a little below average too. Did seem kind of hard to get experience with this character. It's a very tried and true, steady kind of experience build. Um, but here we go, look at this, objectives, 85%. That is the highest we've seen, most effective at getting objectives. And I do start to see a little bit of a trend here that shows that range characters are uh, being more successful at getting objectives completed. So don't exactly know why, I'd have to deep dive into the objectives for that, but there is starting to show a little bit of a trend to that. Uh, that that might be the case so all right guys there you go that is the death walker uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments and until next time beat it nerds